Hello everyone and welcome to episode 5 of the Prog Nerd Reviews. Today we'll be reviewing the Emerson, Lake and Powell album released in the 80s. Now this is I think the second 80s album that I have covered so far in this review series. The first one I did was Moving Pictures which was 81. But this is more of like a mid to late 80s album so really embedded in the decade and I know a lot of people have a lot of differing opinions on the progressive rock scene of the 80s. A lot of people love it, a lot of people like the directions that some of these groups took, and a lot of people just straight up hated it and just thought, why did they do that, blah blah blah. Um, for me, I'm indifferent because I've not heard much 80s prog, so I don't have a solidified opinion, and I don't think it's my place to be saying, well, I don't like it, or I love it, if I haven't really listened to it. So, um, but what I hear, a lot of people seem to lean towards the dislike side than the like but I don't know I think that sometimes bands do bad albums sometimes bands do take a different direction that maybe you don't like but it will earn them some money and everyone loves money <laughs> but a lot of people do love it and I'm here to talk about one in particular the Emerson Lake and Powell album and if you are not familiar with it um it's not got Carl Palmer in it, as you can tell from the name. It's got Cozy Powell instead, who played with a lot of groups like Rainbow. Um, so he's a very skilled drummer, and I do like a lot of his work with those bands that he's been in previously. Um, I think he was in Black Sabbath at one point as well. Yeah, so this album is a completely different feel to the other um, like ELP albums, because I guess new drummer, different sound completely. You know, you have... You bring in a new musician, so if you change guitarists, if you change drummers, you're obviously going to get a different style and a different sound than your previous drummer. If you, I mean, for example, on this album, this is very much like he has his own sound, Cozy Pile, and so does Carl Palmer, so it's very easy to distinguish the two from each other. The first question I always ask myself, do I own this album on vinyl? I do. This album's not actually on Spotify, which made it a little bit tricky to listen to because when I do my reviews, I will be writing and then if I have to pause for a second to write down stuff, then that makes it a lot more useful. But I had to use the vinyl for this one. Sounds great on the turntable, actually. I love the sound and the atmosphere of this album. It's quite a grand and big sound, which I'll get onto. But every time I'd want to stop and write about something in particular, I wouldn't have enough time because then the next bit would come and then the next bit. So I wasn't actually able to stop it. And um, a lot of the tracks run into each other. And I'd only heard this album once prior to this review. So I'm not completely familiar with the album. Um, but I got it because uh, I knew a couple of the tracks and I liked a couple of the tracks. And I thought I'd just listen to it on on vinyl because I wasn't able to find it on Spotify and the uploads on YouTube is just not as good as like a vinyl quality sound. So this album was released in 1986 so just over the bump of the mid 80s and if you see pictures of what they look like it's a very 80s atmosphere that they're going for here. Uh, so this song is about eight tracks. Um, the first side I'm just gonna say now the first side was not my favorite. I definitely preferred side two. Side two definitely saved the album for me because side one I found was quite samey. Uh, there was a lot of the same kind of rhythms, a lot of the same melodies, but just in different, organi organized in different ways. I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, but I do like, I did like when they were a bit more, you know, you didn't know what the next track was going to be like. Like, you had a vague idea, but you didn't know what was going to happen. And with the first side of this record, I kind of could predict how the next track would sound or what the lyrics were going to be like and all that kind of stuff. But that doesn't make it bad. I do sometimes like the repetition of sounds, but not too much. I think this was going a little bit too much for me, but I did like a lot of elements from the song. Like there were parts of songs that I liked, but I don't think that tracks as a whole. I mean, if the first side and the second side sounded very similar, I would not have given this as high of a score that I have, which I will mention at the end of the review. Um, 
and uh, let's just carry on to the review because I'm rambling on a bit. I mean, I am talking about the album. So the first track on the album is called The Score. And I did actually like the introduction to this song quite a lot because I hadn't listened to much 80s prog before. So this was my introduction pretty much and I did like it a lot. And I do like the 80s drum sound. A lot of people don't, but I do like the reverberated and echoes that they put on the drum kits. And I feel like this... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that an electric drum kit was used on this. It sounded too like a proper drum kit to sound like a a, a fake one, like a, an electric one. So um, I thought that parts of this song reminded me of like Nintendo music, like Super Mario music. And I mean that in the best possible way. I, I'm a bit of a Nintendo fangirl when it comes to that, you know. I grew up on Nintendo, grew up on the Super Mario games and stuff like that. So that was like a nostalgia thing for me and I really did like that a lot. Um, it definitely had elements of like the works era of ELP, like especially works volume one, the keyboards have other sound the same and I don't think that that's a bad thing at all. I mean, I loved that part of it. I mean, it sound like the keyboards used in, um, the keyboard sound used in Fanfare for the Common Man was also used, I think, on this record. They sounded very similar. But again, at the same time, it was like a different sound. So it had that element of works volume one in it, but it also had a different slant, obviously, because of the decade and the time period. Um, it's grand in its own way. You know, it's quite big. Again, for a three-piece group, quite a big sound. And I like the kind of darker bits that they put in this track. Like they'll have like the major melodies and then they'd like go into minor and then it'd be like very ambient and atmospheric for like a, a like a minute or so, which I really did love that. Um, the production is very 80s as well. Like just the techniques of production, especially on the vocals. Um, and the sounds of the instruments. Obviously I said, mentioned about the drums being very heavily reverberated and the vocals being very heavily reverberated and the keyboard sound just being very 80s in general like with the synthesizers and all that i like the bass guitar effects as i said i'm a bass player and i i do point look out for that i just wish they made the bass a bit louder on this there was quite a lot of treble i just wish there was a bit more bass guitar action i really wish that that was more prominent in this album. Um, there's definitely an old prog feel to this al to this track in particular. The song structures was very similar. You'd have the intro, verse, long part of instrumentation and it, um, improvisation, and then back to lyrics, and then a very grand exit, which is how I felt this. This track was it had a very nice exit to it um despite the area the era that it was made in yeah very it was a quite it was a long track it was about nine and a bit minutes but you know for a prog track an 80s prog track that was that's quite long and um I, so my phone is very low on storage so that's why there's so many cuts at the moment so i apologize for that so, um, the next track is Learning to Fly. Now, I thought this was quite a weak track, personally. I mean, it didn't really capture my attention from the start. And, um, but I can say that, you know, every time there's something wrong, I can pick out something nice about it. So, I do like the articulation of the vocals on this track. Very nice. And the keyboard solos were very, very good. Obviously, they would be. <laughs> it's Keith Emerson. Um, I liked the vocal overlays as well. There was some some of that like close to the end of the song, and the quiet sections towards the end were, were very nice. Um, the use of instruments was good as well. I just think that the introduction to the song, and I, I I think it was just the introduction that just didn't capture my attention very much. I mean, I don't know what I was expecting. You know, I tried going into this album thinking, right, just put aside the fact that it's got some of your favourite musicians on it and just focus on the music. Focus. So that's what I did. I really pushed all my focus into just listening to the music and not trying to be biased, being like, I do love, I do love their work so much. 
ah, uh, but I had to be stern with my reviews. Obviously, I'm not going to say everything is nice, everything's wonderful, if I don't think it is. So I'm going to say that this track is probably one of my least favourites on the album. Maybe it will grow on me. Maybe it will grow on me with time, um, if I re-listen to it, maybe at one point. But just off this listen alone, I... Wasn't my favourite. The next track is The Miracle. I really did like this song actually. From It did pick up it, pe the pace a bit more because I thought that that previous song was quite slow um, and harder to get into, but this one was very interesting. I did like it a lot. Um, I liked the lyrics and the way they're sung as well. I think that uh, Greg Lake did a very good job on this album actually. I do like his articulation and the st um, production of his vocals, I think it's very good on this album. Um, I like the format um, of the track as well, and I do love the, um, the... They had a lot of reverb on that snare, and I did love that quite a lot. I do like reverb on drums, um, and it's, it, it gives it that 80s sound, that 80s feel to it. It was very satisfying in a way, because I had it on that turntable there, and I could just hear the... Like, I was like, that sounds so good. I like it. Um, I liked the keyboard playing in the song as well. The way that the keyboards work alongside the instruments on this track was very nice. It had a Pink Floyd, like 80s Pink Floyd feel to it. Um, like post-wall Pink Floyd. Like it had that kind of feel to it. Um, uh, could have been the vocals actually. The style of singing. Um, but um, Greg Lake is more of like aggressive voice than Dave Gilmore, so I can't compare the two, but I can compare the way they were produced. Um, you can tell that this song is definitely an Emerson Lake, Emerson and Lake song, Palmer or no Palmer, just that kind of format because of the, just the style of keyboard, style of singing, very significant, you can tell. And I think that when you can leave your mark on a on any kind of sound, whether it be 70s prog or 80s prog or 90s prog or whatever, you're doing something right. If you're able to, if someone's able to say, well, that keyboard solo was done by Keith Emerson or that person who's singing or that person who's playing the bass guitar is Greg Lake. If you can pick out that much detail, then you're doing a good job. So on to side two, which began with Touch and Go, which I think is one that everyone who likes Emerson, they can... Powell, Palmer, whatever, is uh, familiar with because it was a hit. I think it could have been a single, I'm not sure. But I did. that was the first track I heard off the album before I listened to it and I really do love that song. It's such a badass song, I don't know how to describe it. It's got such a big drum sound and I love that so much. Big drum sound with a lot of reverb. That's very, goes very highly in my estimates. Um, I love the way it's sung, I just, I love the bass. I love the keyboards, I just love everything about it, especially the bass guitar, I think. That and the drums are my favourite parts of this song. It's just like, it's brewing, it's building, and it's like, it's so cool. You can just imagine yourself like, ooh, in a film, like with this song playing in the background and acting cool or whatever. Um, I used to be walking down the street and you'd be listening to this song and I'd feel like 10 times cooler. Um, <laughs> but I do like the, I kind of, didn't like the way that it ended so suddenly. I think that it works, but I, I wish that there was more to that song. Um, um, I think a fade out would not work on that kind of song because it was such a rhythmic, very kind of mm, 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 kind of song, like very kind of hard hitting song and a fade out would not have worked on that. But I, feel, I felt sad when I listened to the song and it just ends and I'm like, oh, I, like when you know the end of the song is coming up and you're like, oh, and then you just play it back from the beginning again, which is something that I did with this song quite a lot when I first heard it. I think I played it like three or four times in one go because every time it would like get to the end, I'd play it back and then play it back again because I do love it. I do love that track, especially the live version they did on the, Swi the live concert in Switzerland 97. It's not got um, Cozy Powell on drums, it's got Carl Palmer doing his take on the song. I know a lot of people don't really like that. They're like, oh, well, it just doesn't sound the same as this. Um, you know, it's two different drummers, two different styles completely. I think that they both work, but I prefer the one on the album, the, um, the Powell version. 
Next song is Love Blind, which really does sound like it, it was taken from Love Beach. <laughs> it's a very, that kind of song. Like you could, you could hear it being on side one of Love Beach. Very 80s. I do like the keyboard solo though. This is one of the tracks I didn't like too much because it was just overly cheesy. <laughs> Sometimes you have tasteful cheesy and I think that maybe this song will grow on me. Maybe, but um, it just reminds me of something that would be on Love Beach and I don't dislike Love Beach. I think a lot of you guys know this by now, but this one just, I didn't really like this track. Just, I can't say much else. I just didn't like it very much. Just because of the kind of sappiness, a bit too sweet for me. Um, kind of sad because the album was pr very much great up until that point. And then that song kind of ruined it for me a little bit. Um, but then, after that track, as much as I didn't like it too much, the next track, Step Aside, I absolutely loved. So it made up for that track that was a bit too sweet for me. Um, but this was like a very jazzy kind of song and it really great. I loved it so much. It reminded me of like mid 70s prog where it was very much like Canterbury scene kind of jazz infused and instruments instrumentation the way keith emerson played the piano on this was very like can't be seen prog-esque you know and like with the and very jazz influenced of course um i like the way the song is sung you know it shows a good vocal range that the guy had uh, you know because there was parts in this album where he was really skimming at everything like really screaming not screaming like putting a lot of emphasis on his voice and then this one was very much low key like, if that makes any sense like it was just so perfectly done there was no strain on it whatsoever on greg lake's voice whatsoever i loved this track a lot um the panning again i'm very much a fan of when bands pan stuff left to right because you kind of have to in the mix anyway especially if you're mixing drums like you can't have everything in the middle of the spectrum if you know what i'm talking about you'll understand but it's very hard to explain I find it hard to explain because I'm not a music teacher, but you've got like the spectrum of sound and if you put all the drum stuff in the middle, if you put the kick, the snare, the toms, the hi-hats, the overheads, all in the middle, you get no variation. And so when you're able to have it in different parts of the headphones and the way you're at the spectrum of hearing, it's interesting. And they did that very well on this record, actually, this particular song. I like the way that it would be silent, like quieter drums and then it will go left, right, left, right. And I really loved that. I think that was probably one of my favourite tracks on the album. Um, purely because of the jazzy aspect of it, I really loved it. Next track, Lay Down Your Gun. So this track really got me from the start. Like I found it very interesting in the start. Um, but as it kind of progressed, it got a bit cheesier but not as cheesy as the, um, the, the love blind, the love blind. Um, but I think this one makes sense to be cheesy. It was very tasteful cheesy, like ABBA is tasteful cheesy. Um, but the musicianship definitely makes up for it. I mean, I liked the instrumentation behind this track. Lyrics wasn't a fan of, but the music part I really did love. Um, it gives it gave me the feel of like the vibe of the end of a film like something's just happened and it's like the kind of revelation part of the film where they re the people realize oh we've finally gotten over this journey or battle or whatever that kind of feel to the song and um i thought the bass guitar and the drums worked really well on this track as well towards the end and the use of the sound effects as well where there was like bells going back and forth which is very nice i like a song with bells in it um i can give you some examples high hopes for whom the bell tolls not prog metallica um i think <sighs> black sabbath the song has some some bells on it i like songs with bells that's it <laughs> um hell's bells acdc <laughs> none of those are prog but i liked the uh the bells use on this one 
I didn't mention tubular bells. That's another one that it literally says it in the name. It literally says it in the name. Back to this album. So the last track, Mars the Bringer of War. This is just an instrumental. This album, this track, this piece of music saved the album for me. Like it really bumped up the marks quite a lot because it was simmering just above a five and this track comes in and I was a big fan of it. I was a massive fan of this. I liked the dark intro, the build up, it felt, you know, that feeling of like something's gonna happen, which is like an essential when it comes to prog. You know, you have the build up. And if, you, if you do it right, it works. And if you do it wrong, it doesn't. But here it just worked so well, the way it just build up. It's like foreboding. And then the explosion of the piece, it felt like this is what the album was leading up to. This is what, this is such a great album closer. And just from the beginning, right to the end of the track, I was just sitting there like, what? This is so great. And I love the, the feel of the piece overall. The drumming is great. It felt like pictures at an exhibition era, Emerson, Lake and Palmer. It felt like that, um, which I do love. And the way that it, the track just, it'll go quiet. And when you're like, oh, this is, this is going quiet. It just <laughs> springs on some more dark, foreboding music. And it's so evil sounding. And I mean this in such a good way, because if I can really pinpoint an emotion to it then I can safely say that I love it um the build up to the end of the track you know the part that it's like how's this gonna end how's this track gonna end and it felt like um, something out of a film like a film battle and when you think the track is finished it isn't it like there's like very like millisecond intervals where it's like quiet and then it's back, back, back. And it's like saying, no, we're not done yet. We're, we're still not done. And it gave me a few jump scares because I was like, ah, it keeps coming back. Ah. <laughs> it just kept bringing me back in. And oh, what a great closing track to, an, to the album. So overall, I'd give this a 7.5 purely because I didn't have enough time to let that first side of the album grow on me and also that song, the one that I said was like Love Beach, Love Blind, very disappointing song for me. I mean, maybe it will grow on me, but I just wasn't a fan of that one. So 7.5 today out of 10. Um, musicianship is fantastic, obviously. You got three very skilled musicians. I think it was just of its time, this album, and I do love it. I loved the elements of older ELP sound in there, and I loved the 80s sound mixed in there, the amount of reverb, the amount of you know, the delay, the, just the production was very good on this album, I thought, especially on Touch and Go, the very good production, very clear, very crystal clear. I could see Stephen Wilson possibly doing a remix of this album at some point. But, uh, yeah, my favourite tracks on the album were Step Aside, the very jazzy one that I went off about. Uh, Mars the Bringer of War, very, very good. And obviously Touch and Go, which is fantastic songs. All of those are fantastic. My favourite tracks on the albums, uh, of the album. And um, I'd love to know what your guys' opinions on this album is. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Are you indifferent? Have you heard it? Have you, if you, I, I, I do recommend this album if you are a diehard Emerson, Lake and Palmer fan and you want to listen to something a bit more different but still keeping that same vein, I would listen to it, especially if you're a fan of Cozy Powell as well. If you like his drum sound, then I think you'll like this album because there's a lot of great drumming on this album. Um, so yeah, that is the end of today's video. I will see you all on Friday. Just a quick thing, my contest ends on Monday. It's the 1st of March, um, that's when it will be ending and I will be announcing the winner that evening as well. So if you haven't submitted your submissions yet, bring them in now because otherwise you will, um, you'll miss out and you have a chance to win, talking of works actually, a nice copy of Works Volume 1, still sealed with the sticker, um, if that's something you're interested in. Even if you already have the album, participate it's always good fun all you have to do is write about your favorite prog album 
and tag me in it. Um, but I've done a community post on my community section on YouTube, so you are able to um, post your submissions there. So you just comment down, like, if there's a link, if you've filmed a video for it, or if you just want to explain the album, you're more than welcome to do that. And I've got a lot of information on my Instagram and my Twitter, which is just at the prognerd. So if you have those social medias, then I recommend doing it over there because I can keep up with it a bit better. Plus I check my Instagram way more than I check my YouTube community page and also way more than I check my Twitter. So Instagram is probably the best place to do it. If you don't have Instagram, absolutely fine just leave your submissions in the community section or in on, on twitter because i did a post on twitter as well so yeah friday's video is another collection video i think it's king crimson so i'll be talking about all the king crimson stuff that i own um so you can look forward to that as i said before question of the day what is your opinions on this album do you like it or not let me know. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on 80s progressive rock as it is. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Maybe just give me some good 80s prog to listen to because I have got some coming up in future reviews. Um, I think I've got an Asia album coming up in one of my reviews um, in the next five or six weeks. <laughs> um, so yeah, see you guys on Friday. Bye.